what does it mean for us to have this kind of consciousness? This means that we are separated from spiritual world. This means that we have our spiritual consciousness only if we are in our own realm, in the realm where we cannot experience other spirits. I mean spirits who have much more powerful consciousness and spirits whose consciousness, so to say, could dissolve our own consciousness. And because of these peculiarities of our development, we are in a special condition. And I would like to say in a special corner of world where we have this possibility. In one of his lectures, Rudolf Steiner wrote that, that Michael um, lead, or how is it, I would like to find a good word. Michael tries to lead activity of divine spirit, activity of gods in such a way that possibility of human development is possible. So he protects us. And this kind of protection gives us very special abilities and very special possibilities. And today we try to speak about them. And everyone, I think, in our auditorium knows it very well known information and truth that we are beings who can think, feel, and will. So we are those beings who now are in the situation when we need to spiritualize all those realms of our soul. We all know that now we stay in the time of self-consciousness soul development. And this means that we need to create our consciousness in such a way that we recognize our spirituality, our spiritual potential. Otherwise, we cannot become human beings. When I spoke about this special space for human beings development, I just had this quite clear experience that this special protected by Michael space is necessary for us because we need to develop possibility to become free. And of course, it's very usual word for us. Everyone knows about freedom. Everyone speaks about freedom. But what does it mean in reality, this freedom? It means that everyone in human being, life, has possibility to make a mistake. And it means that we think, feel, and will a lot things which are not suitable for, so to say, true development of all other world. And because of this, there are special beings who are strongly connected with our development and those beings protect us and give us this possibility to create ability to become free. 
this sweet and dangerous and painful word, freedom, means that being who is free can create anything, being rooted only in himself or herself. And how can we find this point where we are rooted? Because if we are rooted not in the truth, we can create, we can create nothing. It's really painful moment to understand that freedom must be rooted in the truth which is not available in every moment of our life. To become free, we had to be temptated. And because of one of the temptations, now we are separated from spiritual world. And we are separated from this world, uh, first of all, in our thinking. And during a lot of centuries, human beings, human generations, created or were creating uh, their thoughts which were totally based on sensual perceptions. But sensual world is not the real one. And we know this. This is the world of the death. And it was just Archangel Michael who sacrificed to human being, the cosmic intelligence. Uh, those spiritual beings who are carrying cosmic, how is it, not, not reason, but just um, cosmic wisdom in this, in, and this cosmic wisdom which expresses the truth. So being incarnated in mortal, deadly bodies, we can experience spiritual reality. We can experience truth. And this is one of the gifts of Archangel Michael. And because of these gifts, we have a possibility to think clearly. And this clear thinking is one of the first, is one of the, sorry, not first, of main tasks of our time. We can think clearly and we need to do this. Are we doing this? This is a question to everyone. This is really intimate experience because only I really know what is the content of my thinking. And using this gift of Michael, we can turn our dead thoughts, which are based primarily and mostly on sensual perceptions to that thoughts which can be alive in spiritual world. So this is the first task and first possibility we have in our time. The next task we have just because we have a task to become free people, free beings. This task is to experience 
there are the beings, there are the human beings, like also potentially free spirits. What does it mean in reality? Anthroposophy, which is also one of the Michaelic gift, opened us the true human being of nowadays. I mean this true image of human being. All of us, we are night and day human beings. And those part of our being which stays in the bed when we are sleeping, when we are in another state of consciousness, this is just outer man. This is the man who is gifted to us by the earth, by nature. And that part of our human being, which is not in the bed during the sleeping, which is in, spirit, in the spiritual world, this is real human being. This is that part of our being, spiritual soul one, which is incarnated once and once in the earth. And if we experience human being, first of all, as that part which stays in the bed, as physical, etheric, and astral bodies, which is which are divided into two sexes, which can be um, can uh, be in different ages, which are penetrating by or penetrated by influences of race, ethnic, and other, I would like to say, spiritual streams, we do not experience real human being. And it's very important in Michaelic time, because we have this possibility now to understand that human being is that spiritual soul part, which is now in this rope or dust incarnation. In his leading time, when Archangel Michael is the leading spirit of our time, he fights against those spirit, spirits who divide human, humanity into races and into special ethnic groups. And because of those spirit influences, there is racism and nationalism in human development and we see every day those really white fruits, very painful fruits of those influences. And to be not nationalistic and not racistic person, it's not enough just think that other races and other nations are equal or they're also good and so on. It's not enough. It's really necessary to experience other beings like spirits. Spirit, which now, only now, is incarnated in this Chinese or British or Russian or Serbian body, which is now in this female or male incarnation which is old or young or just middle age person. And when we really try to experience that this is spiritual beings who has his own ideals and who comes to the earth because of his special tasks and also because of 
our common nowadays time tasks. And only in this case, we can really create possibility for freedom. Because if I cannot experience or one cannot experience mm, other beings like potentially free or just free beings, I cannot, one cannot also become free person. And Michael gives us possibility to come to this point because of our own freedom. From spiritual science, we know that in his own way of development, Archangel Michael now is on, this, on the next state of angelic, of angelic rank. Now he is Akai, his spirit of time. And now he can, and, and so it would be not difficult for him to penetrate our thoughts, to penetrate our minds by any idea. It's really possible for him to contact, to influence directly our bodies, our brains. But he does not do this. He gives us this possibility to go to this point by ourselves. And this is really great divine gift. He waits. In some of his lectures, Rudolf Steiner said, he keeps silence. No any call to human beings. He waits when we can experience other beings like spirits. And one of the way to experience this inner being of human being is to perceive, uh, to, to, to hear, to see the ideal of other human beings. It's not easy, but it is possible. The Third part of nowadays task is being out of any compromises with evil. Akanja Michael is the being who stays without any compromise against evil forces. And we also know from spiritual science that nowadays time is the time when we need to recognize the influences of evil forces in our own souls. And if we recognize those influences and we have possibilities to do this just because of our possibilities, of clear thinking, we need to stay in this position without any compromise. This is one of uh, Michael's call. This is the task of our time. And to make this task available to be realized, Archangel Michael gives us courage, real courage we can experience in our blood. In the end of uh, summer, in the beginning of autumn, there are a lot of meteorite I hope it sounds not so horrible in English. Um, in uh, meteorite rains and those meteors, those fallen stars, they really brings us special 
divine iron, which is coming into our blood, in my Catholic time at least. And this is the next gift from Michael. So in this time, we have everything to, to realize our tasks. Just again, clear thinking. Then experience of other human being like of free spirit. And then courage to stay without any compromise in the situation when we choose between good and evil. And it's not easy, of course. But if we are creating the future, nothing can be easy because we create something which does not exist yet. And because of this, to realize those tasks, to use those gifts from Michael, one cannot be alone. We need to be together. And Michael feast, Michael feast, is the feast of spiritual community. We are oneness on the level of our bodies. Even in the fact that we are divided in our bodies. Everyone has his own body, has his own body. But those bodies are in reality part of our earth. I think that uh, most of us read those lectures when Rudolf Steiner described the first stage of Earth development like ancient Saturn, when all that planet consist, consisted from bodies of, of from those uh, special spiritual images, not images, but spiritual bodies. So once in the beginning of time, thrones sacrificed their own substance to create ancient Saturn. And no one substance which could be the basis for creation of physical bodies came to the earth. So if we look at our earth, at the physical part of our earth, we have only the same substance. I hope I explain this in the right way. Uh, it's not so easy for me to say just this in English, but please try to understand me. So can we imagine the first incarnation of our planet? In that moment, it was like divine raspberry. And only those seeds, spiritual seeds of our physical bodies, which we have now like physical ones, with um, the substance of this Saturn. And during next incarnation, incarnations of the earth, those spiritual seeds, because of different stages and different possibilities of development, uh, has been transformed into all physical things we have now on the on the earth, into the fire, earth fire, into the air, into the um, solid and liquid elements. So 
this is the same substance which we have in our physical bodies. And we have all elements, all chemical elements, which is in the earth, also in our physical bodies. So like a mankind, we are oneness on this physical level. Even if we are divided into different individual physical bodies. Our life is also supported by one source of life. And in every of our bodies, we have impulse of Christ. So we against are equal and we are oneness. We have our common through I, where we also are oneness like a mankind. So we are divided only on the level of our astrality and the level of our soul. We need it. We need to be divided into individual human beings for our development. But we also need a task now to recognize our unity, to recognize that we have one source for our existence. And Michael gave all abilities for us. So we are able to think and to experience truth in thinking. We are able to feel fire in our blood. We are able to recognize by our heart if this truth or non-truth, if this dark or light, clear thinking, if this good or if this evil. And it depends on every person how we deal with those gifts and how we and it depends on everyone to decide to realize those tasks or not. We have also this gift of freedom and staying in this freedom we can choose what to do in our anthroposophical community during this special feast we have the tradition to celebrate this feast together to speak together to meet each other to be in uh, those mood when we really try to experience this common gift, anthroposophy, school of spiritual science, which we have because of Michael Tai. And the minimum what we can do in this situation, in this feast day, just to try to experience our anthroposophical friends like free spirits with his or her own ideals, with his or her unique potential and with this free good will to be together in those days. Today we are in the middle of fifth cultural epoch, not just in the middle, we moved uh, to the end of the epoch. And shall we look at 
our epoch like at the oneness. We stay between great waterfall, how is it, water stream, and uh, war, everyone against everyone. And we stay in the moment when we have possibility to create freedom. It will be not forever, but just now we have this unique possibility. And I really hope that in the moment we have this possibility, we will use it. It depends on everyone. And great res just real respect, not great one, excuse me, real respect to freedom of other person is the first step and not so hard step to creation, freedom. It's not so easy for me to speak about this now in the situation we have in the world, in the situation we have in Russia. But when time of destruction comes, some etheric forces, which are necessary for creation, becomes, become free. And we can use those etheric forces for creation of new life for creation of new understanding, for creation of new community, also for creation new state of anthroposophical movement and anthroposophical community. So in this time of destruction and new creation, we are together in this nice evening, nice day, nice morning, which is not so far from Mikael Mas. Please, if you have any questions, I really would like to answer if I can. Thank you very much, Tatiana. So dear friends, we are moving to answer. Uh, question and answer section. So please find um, right in the middle of your screen a button which is named reactions. And there is, you can click on it, and there is a um, big button, raise your hand, raise hand. Yeah, if you have any question, please click on it. Don't be shy. Can I go ahead? Yeah, please. But yes, you, slowly, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Please slowly. <laughs> so thank you. Um, is it Tatiana? How do you pronounce your name? Tatiana. Tatiana. Thank you so much. Um, for this beautiful description of, um, you know, I've worked a little bit with this verse that I believe Steiner um, wrote during the war, and it describes the capacity to use um, etheric bodies that are um, tragically, in a way, um, of young people, particularly. Yeah. And that when there is a large amount of people uh, crossing the threshold in kind of, um, yeah, uh, traumatic way that that um, should not only be looked at as um, devastation, that, but that there is this new capacity for. Um, but I'm wondering in your talk, if you could say anything about the relationship between Raphael, who also can work with Michael 
now, especially at the fall, that there's something I, apparently um, Raphael working almost from the other side of the earth in collaboration with Michael, or if you have any thoughts in that direction. Seems like we need this healing impulse along with the iron. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, Raphaelic power uh, works on the level of etheric body because any archangel can do this. And also we know that Raphael um, is um, the spirit who is so to say responsible for spring forces and who can really uh, penetrate our breathing system. But uh, uh, I think that Raphaelic power is supporting our heart um, by forces of life, by forces of health. But Michael uh, would like to go into our heart like a leader of our thoughts. So uh, Raphael supports us, but Michael has a task to, um, uh, to, be, uh, to uh, become an owner of cosmic intelligence, to lead again cosmic intelligence, but through our hearts. So we, I think we have those directions together. This healing potential of Raphael, who works in our breathing and blood streaming like a healer, and um, this um, influence of Michael, who brings to us Christ power through our thinking, feeling, and will. So this is connection between coming from etheric world and coming from spirit. At least I have this image. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Tatiana, could you share why the meteoric iron, um, what is it that's happening in the cosmos that creates this meteoric iron at this time? I, I've never researched that. I'm sorry if it's a very obvious question to others. But... I try to explain this. We can find this picture into my chaotic imagination. And uh, um, this uh, special kinds of iron is just spiritual one, spiritualized iron, which is coming into our blood. And in uh, this imagination of Michael time, Rudolf Steiner described that this is iron for, sorry, I need to show this. For Michael, one moment. I do not know this word in English, but it's very important. For Michael Swart. So Michael Swart is just cosmic power which penetrates our soul and can help us to keep our connection with the truth, to find a new connection with the truth. So this sword can destroy lying, not true, non-truth. And this uh, special iron, this is like a divine gift to this Michael sword. Thank you. May I go? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very interested in, uh, because I am aware of this, um, of this release of the youth energy, their life force that's left. Uh, do you have any suggestions how individuals 
who are who who, who could potentially um, be helpful. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, yeah. Thank you. We can use this energy, this power, uh, just for creation, new relations with other people. In these uh, times of destruction, in these times of contradiction, old relations are destroyed. But it's not empty words to create new relations. It's, uh, it's not something which is really very easy. And we can apply to this power to create new thoughts concerning other people. Our old images of each other are destroying in those times of war or just contradiction, cold war, hot war, some military operations and so on. And we need to create new images. We need uh, to we need new thoughts and we can apply for those thoughts to spiritual world and this etheric forces which are now for everyone and cannot be used by people who, who had them before uh, they can become this new power of thoughts but it could be uh, we, we can apply for those forces only for goodwill, only for something which is not for myself, not for oneself, but for all people. And now we need new thoughts about future. We need new images about mankind. And for this, we, we need a uh, special substance. Thank you. Thank you very much. More questions, friends? Jana, Jana? Hi, go ahead. I'm just unmuting. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. Wonderful to meet you and thank you for all that you're sharing. Um, the three questions that live with me and I'll just try to discern which one to bring most. Perhaps I live with the one little hanging question is how much to share as you spoke of, um, how much should we be talking about the Russian soul? There's an awful lot of conversation and everything going on, of course, and especially on social media right now about the Russian soul and it partly seems to me like we can't even really distinguish, we can't speak so fully about it because we're not developed enough <laughs> in part to understand what will be leading the next epic. And part of me feels very protective, for instance, because of a Russian soul in my life at the moment and some Russian souls in my life in the past. How do we work with this? What do we do? We're always seeking so much understanding and yet I'm not sure we can really understand yet. <laughs> yeah, but we can try. Uh, soul as itself cannot be Russian or American or British because uh, soul was incarnated in this uh, people and then in another one and so on. But uh, when uh, any soul is incarnated in Russian bodies, in Russian body, there is a special influence which the land, Russian land, so to say, uh, is, is giving to this soul. And there are um, different influences. The first one is connected with the Russian folk spirit. And this Russian folk spirit cannot influence 
our etheric bodies. I mean, etheric bodies of people who are incarnated in Russian bodies. He influences our earth. And then this spiritual life, which is light, which is coming from Russian archangels, is reflected from Russian earth and influence just the head of Russians. And because of this, we have special mood of thinking. And you can find this mood in Dostoevsky and Solovyov and Tolstoy and so on, um, uh, thinkers and writers who were incarnated in Russian bodies. This is one thing. The other thing is that since 10th century, when Russia became Christian country, the pure impulse of Christ is coming drop by drop to, into any soul which is incarnated in Russian body. So this Russian incarnation means that um, human being has a possibility to live in, so to say, expecting culture, because um, this is really mood of the future, which is penetrating all soul in Russian incarnation. And this is this mood. But of course, there are other things which um, are essential for Russian incarnation. And the first one, also Steiner wrote about this, that uh, um, people in Russian incarnation uh, are not so um, clear, clever, cl clear in thinking concerning outer laws. We do not have such a big respect to any outer law civil law or criminal law, because um, Russians have inclination because of this special soul constitution in this incarnation, inclination to be, to be sensitive to forces of karma. So this is kind of feeling of, is it a good or bad? <coughs> Not um, in, um, real in connection with, so to say outer laws but because of inner experience and russians are quite open for different spiritual religious and cultural streams so this is some things which has been said about Russian incarnation of human soul. But it's also very important to understand that there is something which is common for all mankind behind any incarnation. And of course, Russians are quite big idealists, not philosophical idealists like German speaking, not practically economical idealists, so to say, like English speakers, but quite dreaming idealists. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes it's beautiful dreams. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Um, so more questions, friends. I can carry on, but yeah. So, Jana, one more question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. um, I'm curious, Tatiana, of your thoughts on the future Manichaean impulse. I was thinking what you were saying about Raphael being in support of Michael. And I think. Question. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
I cannot say quite a lot about Manu and his uh, future leading way in, um, in, in his future leading of mankind. But uh, I think that there will be really humanistic leading of him, uh, which can allow us to keep quite more freedom in relations. So those kinds of leading when people can go together and leader just gives light, not impulse to move, but gives light to the path of this way. I, I just can say only this things about this, sorry. I'd like to ask a question. I don't know if there'd be a connection to Michael. Yeah. But um, of Saint uh, Seraphim of Zarov. And I have this little booklet called The Flame in the Snow. And in this book, it talks about uh, Hyperborean Rosicrucians. I have never heard of Hyperborean Rosicrucians. Now, I don't know if they're speaking of Northern uh, Rosicrucians or Southern Rosicrucians, but I understand there's a connection between Rosicrucians and Michael. And with that in mind, I'm wondering about the influence that Saint Seraphim could have could have in Russia or has had in Russia or will have in Russia. Oh, it's really um, I do not know what to say about this. I also didn't hear about this hyperborean Rosenkrushen and um, I think that Russia keeps special forces also forces which are coming from the land to the future. And this is forces which must uh, be able to meet, to, uh, yes, really to meet this, um, to exp yes, to meet, I think is the best word in English. Uh, this uh, self spirit which will come to humanity and this is the main thing we can imagine so some forces which cannot be used for modern development they must be kept for that future time and to be able to accept to meet this um, self-spirit gift from gods. People need to find this way how to look up in a new manner. If you go to Russian church, you will see almost in every church, in all ten, new one, uh, three kinds of uh, angelic angelic beings with two wings. This is the third hierarchy. With four wings, this is the second uh, second hierarchy, and with six wings, like seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. And in Russia, there are the names seraphim and seraphima. This is Russian name names male and female and this hope to to look into spiritual world and to find the big how to say 
Yes, really, I think hope. Be hope for the future. This is really a Russian future. I can't say more concerning your question. Thank you. And I would like, we have almost the, the finish of our meeting. I would like to finish with some, I think, very important words. Every time is unique one. And what is possible now won't be possible in some time and wasn't be possible before. So every moment of our life, we can try to look in three directions and to try to think clearly in those three directions. First of all, we can look outside to the facts of our physical world. Just see what it is. Mm -hmm. Then we can look to other people and try to experience their ideals and try to experience that no one is alone, that we are really together. And the third dimension we can look to is spiritual world, which is revealing itself in every moment of our life. And I wish you warm and good revelations of spirit and also this real experience that no one is alone in any moment of his or her life. And of course, I wish all of us good facts of physical environment. I wish you good time to from Mikhail Mas to 12 Holy Nights and hope to meet you once again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Tatiana, for your meaningful presentation. Um, I hope to hear you from, from you again in the future. And dear friends, please feel free to unmute your computers and say thank you. Yeah, and <laughs> thank you, Tatiana. Happy Michaelmas to you all. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Many blessings. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, friends. Thank you again. Thank you.